All right. <clears throat> Good day to you guys. Uh, I have here a sequence 2, 4, 8, 16. What do you think will be the next number? Yes, you're right. If you think the next number is 20, you're wrong. The correct answer is 32. Why is it 32? If you notice, you 2, 4, 4, 8, 8, 16. Are we adding or multiplying, dividing? Yes, you're right. We're multiplying here by 2 each time. And that's how we got the 32 because we multiply 16 by 2. If I ask you what's the next term here, you will multiply 32 by 2 to get that one, which is 64. What you notice here is that you keep on multiplying to each time. And that is your ratio. And that is common to the entire sequence. And we call that one as common ratio. Today we're gonna go over, or we're gonna discuss about section 7.4, geometric sequence. Geometric sequence is something that there's a common ratio that you multiply each term to get the succeeding term. What is geometric sequence? Again, like I said, in this sequence, there is a geometric sequence, there is this called common ratio, wherein you use it to multiply or to divide to each term to get the succeeding term. <clears throat> Unlike the arithmetic sequence, we keep on adding and subtracting to get the succeeding terms. Example, determine if the sequence here is a geometric. 1, negative 6, 36, negative 216. What you do here, the strategy here is that first term, second term, you divide the second term by the first term. When you divide negative 6 by 1, the answer is negative 6. When you divide the third term by the second term, the answer is still going to be negative 6. Negative 216 divided by 36 is still going to be negative 6. Since that's common, this is your common ratio, which is we use R for common ratio. Therefore, the first problem here is a geometric sequence. Here, number 2. 2, 4, 6, 8. I know it's a pat there's a pattern. That every time I divide, I uh, know every time I add by two, two plus two is four, four plus two is six, six plus two is eight, will give me the, the next pattern. So if I do that one, I know it's common, but this is not a geometric. This is an arithmetic sequence. So what is the formula to be used here? The explicit formula here is. A sub n is equal to A times the ratio, common ratio, raised to the n minus 1. So write the explicit formula for each sequence here. First, the first term is A sub 1, 7. Common ratio is 1 third. So how do we write the explicit formula? Again, the formula is A sub n equals A sub 1 r raised to n minus 1. We just need, every time we are asked to write the explicit formula, basically you're, write, you're, you're being asked here to write the equation, you have to keep the first term and the common ratio. So the a sub 1, which is 7, will go over here, and the 1 third, which is the common ratio, will go right here. And the rest, just leave it like that, and that's how you write your explicit formula. a sub n, the first one is 7, parenthesis, 1 third, n minus 1, just leave it like that. And that's the answer. In relation to what we've been doing, do you think this equation here, is this exponential growth or decay? You're right. This is exponential decay because the ratio here is less than 1 or between 0 to 1, right? Now here, find the 19th term in the sequence. The sequence here is... 11, 33, 99, 297. What I will do there before I start, since this is not described here, but geometric, I will check if the sequence is a geometric by dividing the second term by the first term, third term by the second term, and so on and so forth. If I see here 33 divided by 11, I know it's going to be 3. 99 divided by 33 will give me 3, and so on and so forth. So therefore, I know that my R is equal to 3, which is the common ratio. Look at the, the question here, find the 19th term. I know from there that the n is equal to 19. 
And the formula for geometric sequence is a sub n is equal to a sub 1 r n minus 1. Since n is 19, I'll have a 19. a sub 1 is the first term on the sequence, which happened to be 11 right here. r here is 3. n minus 1 is n is 19. So it will be 18 here because 19 minus 1 is 18. Then the rest is you plug in the calculator. So 3 to the 18 is some big number times 11. So it means that the 19th number on this sequence, if we keep going over here, 4, 2, 6, 1, 6, 2, 5, 3, 7, 9. There you go. Next. Find that 10th term. So we know already from there that n is equal to 10. The first term there is 1. But let's look. Well, we had this example a while ago. This is geometric sequence because every time you divide the second term by the first term, the answer is negative 6. Divide 36 by negative 6, it's going to be negative 6. And likewise, with negative 260 divided by 36, we'll give you negative 6. So the common ratio here is negative 6. If you notice, guys, I tried to put all the components that I needed first before going to the problem. Now I know I got some, I will put in the equation, which we know a sub n is equal to a1 r raised to n minus 1. a sub n, it's going to be the 10th term. a1 is 1, r is negative 6, and this will be 9, because 10 minus 1 is 9, so therefore negative 6. Take note, when you put this in a calculator, don't forget the parentheses for the negative 6, and then close carrot 9. Make sure you do it this way. I hope you can see it, guys. Times 1. Well, obviously, it's going to be the same thing. So the 10th term is negative 1007696. Sometimes if you don't put parentheses, it might lead you to a wrong answer, especially if the exponent is an even number. For this one, for this case here, if you will get the same answer because it's an odd. Now, find the fifth term, a sub n, for the geometric sequence. So here, looking at this one here, negative 12 divided by 4 is negative 3. 36 divided by negative 12 is still negative 3. Negative 108 divided by 36 is negative 3. Always check on it because some, you know, tests or teachers might be, you know, trick on you that it's not geometric and you keep working on something that is not doable for the formula. So I know here that it's geometric and it's also stated here. So r is equal to negative 3. My first term is 4. And you're being asked to find a sub n. So basically, you're being asked to write the formula. So we can go there right away. So you know the formula is right here. a sub n. First term is 4. The ratio is negative 3. n minus 1. And that's the explicit formula. They're being asked to find the a sub n here. Now, what if we try to solve for a sub 5? The fifth term. The fifth term will be a sub 1, which we know is 4, um, negative 3, n minus 1, n minus 1 is 4 here. So here again, if you will try to use your calculator with negative 3 raised to the fourth without parentheses, the answer will be negative 81. And that's wrong. Because this isn't even, you're going to put negative 4 inside the parentheses and close it, raised with a positive exponent 4, it will be now... No, I'm wrong. Negative 3. I mean, parentheses negative 3 close to the fourth power. It gives you a positive 81 times 4. The answer is a sub 5 is equal to 324 as the fifth term on this sequence. Okay, next. So given a, given a term in geometric sequence and the common ratio, find the explicit formula here. All right, this is different. So if you're going to analyze this one, you have a sub 1 a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, a sub 5 is 512. The common ratio here is 4. So how do we do this one here? First, a sub 1, a1, r, n minus 1. This is a5. a1 is unknown. Common ratio is 4. And this will be 3. So a5 is 512. 512 is equal to a1. 464. Solve for the a sub 1 there. 512 divided by 64 
will give me a sub 1 is equal to a 